want to play that game. We could look into why a, an evangelical Christian like uh, Mike Pence wants to be on a ticket with a president caught with a porn star, or how he feels about the uh, uh, immigration policy that he called unconstitutional before he decided to team up with Donald Trump. If folks want to play that game, we, we could do it all night. We have a choice between a leader who is going to have his minions attack people when they are being targeted by domestic terror groups, and we have a leader who calls to see how you're doing to check in and to see what they can do to help and to be supportive. And it tells you everything you need to know about the character of the two people on this ballot that we have to choose from in a few weeks. Hey everybody, welcome to the Muckrick Podcast. I'm Jody H. Sexton. As always, I'm here with Nick Houseman. Uh, luckily, I, I, I've got Nick with me because uh, there's a lot to go over and it just never, ever, ever possibly ends. And uh, this this stupid merry-go-round continues to go around. So here we are. Uh, we, we have to start with uh, the, the, <laughs> the revelation today that multiple members of a white supremacist militia in Michigan have been arrested uh, for planning the kidnapping of the governor of Michigan. They plan to take Whitmer. They plan to ferry her to Wisconsin, by the way, which is just a real matter of states' rights, if you ask me, where they were going to try her for treason and, I would have to assume, Nick, presumably execute her. Uh, this was seen as a, uh, a real pressing threat. Uh, white supremacist terrorism continues to be an actual problem in this country that no one actually wants to talk about. And on top of it, it's all about coronavirus. It's all about Republican radicalization. Trump telling people to liberate Michigan. How about it? Uh, I mean, there were talks of they were going to try and blow up a bridge near the house to thwart authorities that would come in to rescue her. I mean, it, I don't I, I will. I really want to find out ultimately how competent these people really were, because it does sound a little bit like a Coen Brothers movie where everything would just go wrong. But by the way, in a Coen Brothers movie, she is just she gets killed because they completely bungle whatever this is supposed to be. But it, it does sound like that. And when you look at the pictures of these guys, I, I swear it was like photoshopping the same face four times in a in a mugshot. And it's not surprising what that they look the same and they are the same people. Um, and it, it really is concerning because now, if you notice, the, the Republicans are trying to attack Whitmer for her response. And um, as if, how dare you be angry that a president encouraged people to kidnap you, <laughs> basically. Uh, it's really, really troubling. And I, 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 I think it's safe to say that Michigan, it's not surprising that it's in Michigan of all places. No, and, and Michigan has been a hotbed of militia activity, which, by the way, is just a media code word for white terrorism. Right. It, 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 it hides it behind the Constitution. This idea of a well-regulated militia or whatever bullshit they want to hide behind. It's white terrorism. And this is the most pressing thing in America. And by the way, has been for decades. Matter of fact, if you even want to get crazy, you could say centuries and go back to the Confederate States of America and call that a white terrorist organization, which uh, I would. I would go ahead and call that a white terrorist nation threat. Um yeah, Michigan's had this problem for forever. Uh, it was not a surprise whatsoever that the reopen protests began in Michigan, which, of course, Betsy Davos and, and their, that entire cabal of, of, of wealthy Republican donors and power brokers uh, created this, uh, this movement to try and reopen the country in order to get their businesses running again and, and help their own private bank accounts. Uh, and what did they do? What did they do? What did Donald Trump do? What does the Republican Party do? What does the NRA do? They continue to flirt with fascism and white terrorism, and it always leads to these types of situations where people either get murdered or these plots have to be foiled before they blow something up and kill somebody. And thank goodness they did that. Thank goodness the, the FBI is still on top of on top of it, and not, I guess, so demoralized by what Trump has done done to them that they they aren't as effective in their jobs. And but that's the that's the point is that these people tend to be a little bit um, uh, not great at what they're trying to do, and you know easily found out they were posting shit on online, and they had been monitoring this group for a while. 
So it wasn't necessarily hard for them to sort of infiltrate. I'm just glad they got there before they did anything terrible. Although I have to imagine this wouldn't have worked. I mean, I don't know what they would have thought. She's got a security detail. And also, let's not shit on everybody in Michigan because, remember, they, they elected her, right? There's a lot of people in Michigan who are sane people who are not like these these white supremacy, you know, um, cosplay people. So, you know, I would imagine that most of the state actually understands the importance of what she needs to do, which is shutting down the state in terms of protecting them and their from COVID. So that's the one thing I wanted to make clear, because I feel like we don't want to lump Michigan in as like just, you know, like Mississippi or anything. Well, <laughs> the, the MI poor states. Mississippians. These poor Mississippians just hanging out at home listening to the Muckrake podcast and all of a sudden one of their favorite co-hosts and all podcasting shits all over them. I, I will say this, that Michigan has a special level of paranoia to it. I've had conversations with people in Michigan, and I'm talking like really rational, sensible people that I thought this would never happen, who in the middle of the conversation would talk about defending their water and their lakes and their rivers and, you know, being willing to die to protect that water. And I was like, oh, that took a turn real fast. So Michigan has an interesting culture. But I will say this. These people are the worst white terrorists, right? These are the ones who are just like, they're on Facebook openly posting about it. They don't even try and hide this thing. Like, and and, and by the way, I, I don't want people to stay awake and like, the FBI is not very good at this stuff. Like, they catch the people who float up near the surface. The people <laughs> who like send up a signal and they're like, look at this. Because I have to tell you, the FBI has missed out on a lot of attacks simply because maybe they even knew something was going on. Like, um, God, what was that thing in it's 2001? September. Nick, we, in, it, it was getting colder outside. I think it was a Tuesday. Uh, it, it, it'll come to me later on. But the, the whole point of this is this group is like junior varsity C team is who this group was like and, and and who knows like you said maybe even like something you know could have happened like something could have ended up like going wrong terribly terribly wrong and somebody could have got hurt or gotten killed i mean they were on their way to pick up explosives yeah like that's when they got picked up the problem is that this jvc team represents a group of people that many of them are good at what they do. Many of them are ex-military. Many of them are ex-law enforcement. Many of them are well-trained terrorist cells. A lot of them ha- are well-connected. A lot of them have arsenals. A lot of them have weapons training and uh, all of this, all of these backgrounds that make them more effective. A lot of them are linked up to groups around the world that share information. They coordinate actions. They're part of a neo-fascistic group. It doesn't help, of course, that the president of the United States not only refuses to distance himself from these people, but he sends out signals to them constantly. I'm sorry, but liberate Michigan, liberate Virginia, liberate any of these states. These were open calls for violence. And Donald Trump and the Republican Party and the NRA, these are people who profit off of these people, but they also radicalize them. They created a situation where Whitmer could have been murdered and and people serving around Whitmer and protecting her could have been murdered. Right. And we also know that the the, uh, the local congressmen of, of, of Michigan were also threatened at the time at the um, at the Capitol building where they had all these yep. guys with their guns on balconies, like, you know, looking down at them. And there was reports that some of the um, official had to put on, you know, uh, bulletproof vests and stuff like that. So this is not this is not cosplay anymore. This is serious stuff. Uh, and, and what kind of wraps my head around this or what I'm trying to wrap my head around is. Like, how did we get to this place? How did we get to a, a p- position where, you know, people were protecting public health means it's a complete violation of constitutional rights? And because it doesn't feel like it's always been that way. And it, it feels like we must have had moments in our in our history where when the government came in to protect the, the, the public over a pandemic, for instance, we listened. And so I did a little deep research into this, and it turns out, like certainly in the very beginning of our of the country, in the you know after 1776, this happened all the time. There was every kind of disease attacking these cities, whatever we want to call them at that point, uh, and they were having lockdowns left and right, and it was not a problem at all for anybody to listen to it because they were your average expectancy life life expectancy was like 25 years old there, so they they got it. Like we have to keep the dengue fever out of here. 
Um, and it, it kind of progressed that way for a while. Then in the 1800s, at some point, it became much more of a local thing, which made sense because let the local governments control this. They know what's happening on the ground. And, but again, people would listen. It wasn't an issue. They're like, okay, we're going to social distance. That was the big one. Uh, and I think the last one we really had was the Spanish flu. And you know, a long enough time has passed where we don't have any connection to history of like how of that civic duty. So I suppose 100 years of non-civic duty and, and feelings have contributed to this mindset where you are an affront to uh, my civil liberties basically because you need to wear a mask and social distance and, you know, not go into stores. So here's the thing about all of those situations that you just talked about. I assume in all of those situations, there was some town idiot out ringing a bell on the corner and he's like, ye old smallpox, it's, it's, a, it's a plot against us, you know, <laughs> and like screaming about demons in, in the woods and, you know, people being possessed. And I saw Goody Brown with the devil underneath an elm tree or whatever. I assume there were some people screaming that at the time. The problem is that that there wasn't like a tightly knit group that ran throughout the entire United States where one crier went to another crier who went to another crier until it was like, you know, a Fox affiliate. Like this entire situation is based on the fact that the American right has been living in a paranoid alternate reality for decades now. And it's been living in that. So for a while... It was absolutely a fear of, like, Soviet uh, infiltration, right? They were totally afraid of that. But they also used that as a way to um, legitimize white supremacist terrorism, right? To go around lynching people, murdering people, uh, burning down neighborhoods in African-American towns and neighborhoods. And then, of course, it grows and it grows and grows until we have reached a point where we have 24-hour news networks and online websites that do nothing but tell people that there is a secret clandestine conspiracy against everyone. And as a result, people are living in this alternate reality where masks either don't work or they make it worse. You know what I mean? And these shutdown orders are about... I. I who knows what these people are, are saying the shutdowns are. They're either trying to wreck the economy to hurt Donald Trump, or I assume there's some sort of New World Order deep state plan that ever needs everybody out of the streets probably to put up 5G towers and, you know, cause us all to go sterile or become gay or whatever it is Alex Jones is screaming about while ripping his shirt off. The entire situation has changed because there is a profit to be made off of this alternate reality. There are elections to win out of this reality. But the problem, the, the, the people who are using this to profit and gain power, they're sitting at home with guards. Do you know what I mean? Like they're sitting in, in cushy neighborhoods away from these morons. And these morons are being turned and radicalized left and right. And there's a reason why white terrorism is the biggest threat is because the right has continued to stoke the racial paranoia to the detriment of not just our politics and culture, but now our health. It's a hell of a thing. So it sounds like you want to trace it, like the Venn diagram here would overlap racists with, um, it's not libertarian, but it's the the motivation to stand up to the government for like this tyrannical, uh, you know, I would say sovereign citizens. It would be like the people who believe that the government has no right to actually exist. Yeah. You know what I mean? And if it does, if it does exist, it should simply be there to protect our liberties. It's a very self-focused thing, which is what white supremacy is, right? It's like everybody else in the world can suffer as long as I get mine, which is a lot what the sovereign citizen type of thing is all about. It's the idea that there should not be such things as laws and governments. I mean, it's it's a challenge against shared society, which is what a lot of these anti-maskers, anti-vaxxers, all of those people are about in the first place. It's about, I don't want to be put at risk, and so everybody else has to be put at risk. It's a very selfish Venn diagram. Okay, so so I think we're getting somewhere here with it. It's, a, it's selfish. It is a lack of sense of community, basically, where I, I'm, I'm kind of curious, what would they do if they get pulled over? I mean, I imagine they're going to listen, you know, they'll, they'll pull their car over or the flashing lights are behind them. Right. Uh, it, maybe it has to be a white cop. I, like, I don't know um, how that works. I mean, do they if the, if the fire department comes and says, like, get the hell out of here. We got to put the fire out like they're going to listen to the firemen. Right. Like, I, I wonder. 
I, you know, first of all, like the, the hypocrisies of all of this, they never cease. They just don't. Like in order to live in a society, I think all of us have to take on hypocritical viewpoints every now and then. You know, we have to go against our own principles, which I think a lot of these people are totally about. They're much more ideological than they are uh, in practice. But I have to tell you the question about whether or not that what they do when they get pulled over. A lot of these people are cops, and a lot of these people are in tight with the cops because the idea behind it is that my rule of law should rule over your idea of law. And as a result, I'm in really tight with law enforcement because we're all about these hierarchical structures. So, it, you know, the, a lot of these people I would have to assume. And by the way, we're not going to dive deep into it as a culture. We're not going to talk about these guys who got caught. We're not going to have big stories talking about who they are, what they are in their community, what radicalized them. None of that because... Our media and Americans in general don't like to talk about white supremacy and they don't like to talk about white terrorism because it really unravels the idea of about American exceptionalism. But if you got that story, if you got that deep dive, I would assume a lot of them are, you know, volunteer firefighters or something or they, they are friends with the police or have been part of a police or have worked as security guards like that mindset is 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 inborn in a lot of these people. Is it safe to say that their mindset also believes that their version of government is the best version and it needs to be that yeah. needs to be how government needs to be run and we will do anything we can to achieve the version of the government that they have in their brains, right? That's safe to say that that's probably where they exist, right? Well, so I, I let's take these guys to their logical endpoint, right? Like they wanted to cause a civil war. And, and, and at the end of the day, like it wasn't just about Whitmer, but like all these groups have like one idea in mind. The idea in mind is that through their actions, they will destabilize America. This is the reason it was like the emergency podcast that we did. We're white supremacists. And by the way, we were on that and nobody has given us the dap for that, but we'll take it. It's fine. The white supremacists were going into these like uh, the, these protests and causing riots and causing a destabilizing like sort of a, a racial unrest. Well, what they wanted to do is they wanted to lead to a civil war. They wanted to destabilize the system so that they could come out of the shadows and take over the system and create their own government, right? Their idea is that other people have screwed things. And by the way, this is what fascism is, right? It's the idea that other people had a shot and democracy had a shot and it failed so badly that you need me to come in, take over, and build something up. So these people at their logical extremes... It's not just they, they, they have that fantasy of being like, you know, an apocalyptic warrior or something. But they also, at their logical endpoint, they truly believe that they would run things better and that their type of government is inherently and intrinsically better than anything that we've got. Exactly. Now, it sounds awfully familiar to me, Jared, when you frame it that way. It sounds awfully familiar to um, what are they called? Republicans. Yes. The Republican yeah. platform basically is yep. built on this whereas yep. we don't it's completely messed up we have to fix it there's only one way to run the government we know how to do it you yep. guys are too stupid to understand this so by any means necessary we're allowed we are privileged or allowed to be able to do anything we can to get to this shining hill on a uh, shining city on a hill thing and i think it directly connects to you know what mike lee was talking about in his tweets Ooh. earlier today which, by the way, so those of you who might not have seen it, I, I was tweeting about this earlier. Um, so Mike Lee, during the debate last night, was listening. <laughs> Apparently, uh, Kamala Harris said democracy at some point. And Mike <laughs> Lee just had a problem with the word democracy. And he was like, we are not a democracy. And by the way, that was enough because we're technically a republic. He's not wrong. And by the way, if you haven't yet, just to let everyone know, uh, the second episode of my American Rule lecture series dropped today in which I talked about how America was founded as a republic because of white supremacist aristocracy. So check that out if you haven't already. Mike Lee says we're not a dem democracy, which he's right. He then went on to say, what did he say, Nick? How did, how did he Here, say Here's it? the actual, ready for the quote. He says, democracy isn't the objective, semicolon. Hey, semicolon. Hey, that's an interesting semicolon, isn't it? It is. That's, I mean, that's a, it does a lot. Yeah, yeah. It's, a, there's a, there's a, it's, a, it's a pregnant pause there. Uh, liberty, mm -hmm. peace, and pros... Well, he wrote prospicity, which I can't imagine <laughs> we get to prospicity because it must be the next level. Well, by the way, the Republican Party can't run an economy, so maybe it is pros prospicity. Yes, maybe right. Maybe that's something different. Sure, but yeah. liberty, peace, and I'm assuming prosperity are. We want the human condition to flourish... 
flourish, flourish, whatever that word is, rank democracy can thwart that. And I haven't, I, have you heard of the term rank democracy before? No, I, I sat around with it. I thought that it meant like stink. Yeah. Like, like something that was like something that was like so man maybe i'm wrong but i, I i've never heard of that term before yeah. I, I mean here because it to me it's like yeah they're sitting on their yachts in the in the country club and you know muffy <laughs> would you pass me a look at this rank Wait, democracy no, no, um, mike lee and then they're not on a they're not there they're actually like on a pontoon boat ah uh, is what they're on, rank they're democracy. on a very very right. fancy so but I'm thinking that he's thinking rank democracy like we are like sheep heading over the cliff because we all are fall in line, you know, in, in, in our, with a rank, you know, like a low rank in, a, in the army. That, that was sort of what I'm thinking he meant. But again, I've called this. We've talked about this before. They don't want democracy because no. the will of the people clearly dictates things like Roe v. Wade, right? The will of the people clearly wants Roe v. Wade to be the law of the land. And they don't care. That, that's what the thing is crazy about this. They, they have control over the government, and if, even though the fact that they represent so far fewer than 50% of the people in the country. Oh. And they don't care. And again, it's just like they have the same objectives as these people in Michigan, where yes. they will do anything they can by, by all means necessary because they're so convinced that you know, anytime a Democrat's run something, it's gone in the ground. It's terrible. It's a catastrophe. And whenever we've done it, whenever the Republicans have done it, it's been on their way to Shangri-La and heaven on earth. And that's the stakes they've raised it to. And here's where we are. That's, I mean, if you can't see that, that, that Venn diagram overlaps quite a bit. And that's why it's so dangerous in this country and what? why I'm so worried about the election. What's what's in the center of that Venn diagram? Can we Can we just take a second, maybe a little Jeopardy music, where... Where white terrorism and the Republican Party, who do not believe in democracy, what's in the center there? What is it? it it's, it's, oh, wait a second, I'm looking at it closer. White supremacy. It is the idea that, and by the way, this has been at the center of like most major American movements. There's a reason why earlier in the 20th century, which by the way, inspired Nazism and fascism, but we don't have time to get into all of that right now. There's a what reason is time? why when we were, de- <laughs> what is time? There's a reason why during the immigration debates in the early 20th century, everyone's like, we have to preserve the white race. We have to make sure that we are not overtaken because we are special. And there's something inherently good about us that puts us ahead of everyone else. The white supremacist problem in America, particularly during a time of changing demographics, has led to white terrorism because they believe that they are being overtaken and being overrun and that there's a clandestine conspiracy against them. And the Republican Party has told them that there is a conspiracy against them and that they're being overtaken to make sure that they continue to, one, vote, two, donate money, and three, perform asynchronous terrorist attacks and to keep people terrified. It doesn't mean that Mike Lee wants people to go out and shoot up Walmarts in El Paso and leave behind manifestos about having to do it and kill minorities, right? But that's what happens. And it's happened so many times. Like, this is linked directly to, uh, to, to Timothy McVeigh. It's the exact same thing. And when these groups, when a power group realizes it's losing power, it destroys democratic institutions. It does it intuitively until it just starts doing it all the time. And that's why Mike Lee did that. And that's why we arrested these assholes in Michigan. It's because they're part of the same offensive against people of color who they believe are coming after them. And that's why it's so fucking dangerous because it's so easy yeah. in open society like this to do the most unspeakable damage and carnage. We saw what McVeigh yep. did, but basically one guy demolished a building and killed countless people. Uh, and you're, you're almost like not going to be able to stop that, right? A lone wolf by himself, if he's not broadcasting it, like it's, I don't know how you're supposed to stop that short of violating everyone's civil liberties. And so what you, the one way you can stop it is to not signal these people that it's okay to do this and to, it's okay to form this kind of ideology. Did you learn, okay, so we, we obviously had changed at some point from the great debates about um, immigration back in the, like when was that when we were talking about its 20s, 30s, right? Yep. So yep. we obviously like broke that chain. I know I was raised in the 70s, uh, but with the, the great American melting pot. That was the great story of the land of opportunity. We were almost indoctrinated with that. You're a little bit younger than me. Happy birthday. Did you, were you raised with that? 
Well, I, I will also, I, I think this is important to, to point out. The Great American Melting Pot was propaganda. Great propaganda, it, though. <laughs> it's great propaganda. And a large part of it had to do with the fact that, quote unquote, white Anglo-Saxon Americans were becoming outnumbered by immigrants and people of color. So what did they do? They made all of the immigrants that they held out and all of the immigrants that they vilified, Italians, uh, you know, Irish, they made them white. They suddenly, one day, they just became white. And so America was a melting pot. All these people come together and they form white America. And there's a reason why now, all of a sudden, the white identity movement also includes, like, uh, let me see, what's that group that had that suddenly last night Mike Pence was uh, was defending? Oh, yeah, Catholics, right? Because they were, they were being scapegoated for forever. And then all of a sudden it turned into, it's like, no, we are one group. And we are whites, and then there's people of color. And for the longest time it was white Anglo-Saxons, and he, you're over here, you're over there, you're over there. So the melting pot was a political necessity and wonderful propaganda. I mean, it was really, really smart. I was raised up in a time where all of a sudden, and this was the 1980s into the early 1990s, where all of a sudden it became this thing where like the Republicans realized that certain groups of people would come into America and might vote conservative, right? If they had enough money, they had enough means or something like that. And so you've started to see it's always about political positioning. It's always trying to figure out the niche. It's always trying to figure out the demographics that will get you elected president. And that's it. They won't let anybody else in the club. And by the way, they sure as hell aren't going to share their spoils with you because that's the top 1%. But they will bring you into the in-group if it keeps out the out group. And that's the problem here is that they have told a lot of these people who, by the way, have no doubt been hurt by Republican policies. I guarantee to a person, the people in this white terrorist cell, I guarantee to a person they've been hurt by Republican economic policies and and, and probably societal pro, uh, 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 policies. But that doesn't matter because they have to vote for one thing or they have to do one thing and that's protect the white race. That's what they're about. And so the Republican Party continues to dice, 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 and dice and radicalize. They've created an absolute tinderbox here. And again, we we've, we've kind of were almost comforted in the notion that they don't have to hide anymore, the Republicans. They don't have to hide their, uh, their lies and their uh, the hypocr- Hippocratic, not yep. Hippocratic, hypocritical stuff. You know, so, so here's a senator, a United States Whoa. senator, coming out and just saying it, like, out loud, it's insane. Yep. It's insane that he would think that like the democ- democracy isn't the objective here. It, it, that should be the uh, okay. Again, you can call it a democratic um, a republic, right? With a tinge of uh, socialism, whatever we want to call it. But um, but like he, he's talking about wanting the human condition to flourish. I mean, I don't even know what this is. What this means? Uh, although there's so much subtext that I guess I'm hearing it loud and clear. Um, it's just it's just mind blowing to me that we have this, and so you know the, the biggest dichotomy here is you have people who are like accusing. What I hear is you know Democrats, oh you're just sheep. The rank de- Democrats are just falling in line and you know perfect roles, and you're just going to march to these orders of these these radical leftist people. But guess who really is the one following, <laughs> without any thought or any critical thinking or any self reflection? It's them, and. We, one of us is lying, right? One of us is wrong. <laughs> I One of my favorite subplots of the last six months is your fascination with that, which is that we're all having the same conversation, <laughs> right. and one side is lying and the other side understands it. That it, it, Because it's true. It's arguing over righteousness yeah. is what it is. I mean, it's a big, giant argument over who possesses the truth. And what you just said also about like this idea of like rank and file and being manipulated. Again, I want people to go watch this American Rule lecture that I just taped because I have to tell you, the conversations the founders were having. It's and, and one of the things I hate, man. It's everyone's like, oh, the founding fathers were probably rolling over in their graves right now. It's like, no, this is exactly what they designed the government to do. Like James Madison designed the government of the United States of America to protect the economic wealthy, the the, the minority of the most wealthy people. You're so not patriotic, man. 
Yeah, yeah, this is not a patriotic education. It just happens to be what actually happened. And the entire point was all of these people, and by the way, they were all wealthy, merchants, slaveholders, white men, they were having conversations and it was like, should we have a democracy? And they're like, oh my God, are you kidding? Have you ever talked to people? <laughs> they're stupid and they'll, and they'll totally be manipulated and they'll be led astray. And then if you read the Federalist Papers, which by the way, basically every Republican has a copy of the Federalist Papers underneath their pillow tonight. You know what I mean? And there's like, thank, thank, thank you, Alexander Hamilton. And thank you, John Jay. And thank you, James Madison. And, and, while, and in the Federalist Papers... Madison tells him it's like, no, you can't trust the majority of people. You have to create a system that like oppresses them and keeps them manipulated. And you have to have complete control over these morons. Like they should not be allowed to vote. It's an excess of democracy, right? If you have democracy, it's a problem. And the Federalists, by the way, the Federalist Party went away because they were proto-fascist. They didn't believe that most people should be able to rule themselves. And eventually Jefferson comes out and sweeps them out. That's neither here nor there. The entire point is that this is about turning the clock back and creating, and, and by the way, we already have a white aristocracy. It's trying to create a white aristocracy where they can just come out and say this shit. Like the fact that Mike Lee, he, he, he was on his phone and he just typed it in and he's like, yeah, tweet. Good luck, everybody. And he did it twice. That's incredible to me that he thought that that was okay. But they are getting to the point where they don't even have to hide anything anymore. Nothing. Yeah. And, and you know, and, and it, it riles them up. You know, and, you know, it's, uh, gosh, I, didn't, I, I had something to say about that. And, uh, I'm, you know, that we, you covered it pretty well. Um, and, and, again, yeah, because I, I just feel like I'm a broken record on this thing as far as uh, w- whether or not somebody, we're right. Right. We're right. Oh, I know what I was going to tell you, you know, this whole notion of we're all dummies. We can't you know, be trusted to vote. Like I just filled out my ballot and sent it in. I, I got to tell you, there's propositions. There's things on there. I'm like, I have no idea. What do I do? I, I go to the L.A. Times. I look up the Democratic Party's recommendations. Like I'm a sheep. I don't know half of these things. So, you know, they have a point in to some degree. Right. Uh, I don't even know at some point how how informed like there's a percentage of like really informed and like not at all. I really wonder where we all line up on a, a lot of these different things. Now, California is not as bad as it used to be. There used to be a dozen propositions to deal with on every ballot. And it was like it was so confusing and they seem to have less now more recently. So, um but again, like, what do I? I'm I'm informed, but like, I, I was still, you know, having to kind of just be a sheep on this one and sort of follow what someone's telling me to do. I have to tell you, I <laughs> one of the things I was on a flight. Remember that we used to get on the big metal birds and go places. Like, what a, what a time! What a time that was. I was on a flight and it was an Atlantic article, and I can't remember who wrote it. I wish I could off the top of my head. I assume it's probably David Frum. It's got to be somebody like a David Frum. And the article was like. Donald Trump has proven that democracy doesn't work. We need to go back to the times before primaries and have smoky roomed, you know, parties choosing our candidates. And basically it should have been titled, you're all stupid. Thanks, <laughs> stupid. Right. And, and, and the whole point here is we cannot be so discouraged by what democracy can wreak, it's, especially in this environment, which is highly propagandized. Right. Which has a capitalism, which at all fronts, we talk about this all the time. Our system of capitalism is disaster capitalism. It's all set up to profit off of things that are terrible for America and terrible for the individual American citizen. Just because democracy has been infected with that doesn't mean that we can't have it better. It doesn't mean that we don't deserve better and that we can be informed and that we can make smart decisions. It just goes back to this idea. We're trapped in these mythologies and propaganda. And it's intentional that that has happened, right? That, that we've been put in a position where we don't know up from down and down from up. And so we have these groups of people. By the way, that, that terrorist cell, man, they're legitimately operating in an alternate reality. Like that, that's not the real world. The idea that the governor of Michigan shut down the state during a pandemic for some sort of, I don't know, Bill Gates, Mark of the Beast conspiracy. God knows what they're telling themselves at night. But this is not a reality that even resembles shared society or objective reality. It's, It's a completely different animal. But we can do better and we have to do better. And if we don't do better, man, 
this country is not going to be hospitable. And I, and I don't mean just because of Donald Trump. I mean everything from climate change to coming fascism. If we don't figure this thing out, it's, it's Wait, game over. I, I, you know, I mean, from climate change to dealing with fascism to, like, to shopping at Walmart, like, that's a big problem. Um, so I, I agree with you. I feel like um, you know, it, it's almost like the alternate reality c- continues to be uh, ginned up for these kind of people – even in the littlest things that, that President Trump will do. So it's yeah. like these, these videos he's filming in front of the White House. And it's like we can't even decide if it's green screen or not. I mean, it's not green screen, so trust me. But, you know, like the fact that we have to even talk about that stuff or just the fact that like when you get a, a note from his doctor about how he's supposed to be doing. And we got to <laughs> talk about this because he thinks he's going to, in a few short days, appear live in the same room indoors with another candidate to debate. And it's disgusting even the rhetoric and how they're trying to frame this, where he's like, Biden doesn't want to get beat up again like he got, <coughs> yeah, he's the sweep the leg, Johnny. That was awesome. Yeah. Like, that's what it, then they're trying to do it. But it, they lost, man. Johnny got, you know, uh, oh, man. What's the, what's the move? Uh, the Dude, crane? He got John, crane, crane kicked. kicked. <laughs> Dude, he got crane kicked into the coronavirus and airlifted to Walter Reed is yeah. what happened. Uh. By the way, can we go on the record? Because this is coming out. Uh, this is being taped on October 8th. It's coming out on October 9th. Hopefully, knock on wood, we don't have to get on here in our pajamas and record an emergency podcast at 7 a.m. tomorrow. Okay, but here's the question. Uh, yes or no? Because we've talked about the timeline on Trump's coronavirus. Yeah. There's a real possibility this weekend it gets bad again. Do you think he goes back to the hospital or has an incident this weekend? Yes or no? Um, yeah, I think so. I mean, it, it all depends on when they stop giving him steroids. In my mind, steroids is what's, is what's propping him up. And I'm not like making that up. It seems like that's what the consensus is for a lot of the medical community uh, looking at this thing. Now, again, Regeneron, you know, could very well, you know, be curing people as a whatever. By the way, and, and the, you know, the worst thing about that is that he has he's invested in, in Regeneron. He has a financial interest in this company. Um, and it's like, you know how many people have been tested for this thing? 300, mm-hmm. maybe 400 people tops. You know, in a short. Are they all period. named Trump? I'm guessing. <laughs> yeah, and so it's like, how well, dare he do that? And then frame it like, well, the, uh, the Democrats are trying to keep you all sick and not let you have the access to drugs. When in reality, this thing has not been tested. We he could have a fucking aneurysm tomorrow from this stuff, and we, or a heart attack or anything, and you would never. We wouldn't even we know. But that, that that's the that's the scary thing about this thing is he doesn't even care. Um, and I think it's going to backfire on him. So yes, I think that uh, he will he will make a turn for the worse uh, by Monday, by Sunday or Monday. Well, uh, first of all, and, and since we're on the subject, and because by the way, we are we are really dedicated to maintaining an actual reality and talking about facts. We talked the other day. We were talking about his doctor, Sean Conley, and I want to talk about this note that he released. But we had somebody reach out to us who is in the medical field who informed me that like. Conley is exactly the equivalent of a doctor. Has gone through all the different stuff. So we got that wrong in terms of like the the different types of things. So he is he's technically oh, yeah. a doctor, right? Okay. So we were wrong about that the other day, but I will say that doesn't stop Sean Conley from like writing a note that says like Donnie has to miss gym class on Tuesday. His tummy hurts. Like he's writing He's writing memos about how Donald Trump can go and have a debate. Which, by the way, this entire White House is infected top to bottom. We saw uh, we saw Mike Pence last night basically look like he was going to lose an eye to coronavirus. <laughs> oh, wow. And then... And now we have the president of the United States saying that he should go to this debate and probably, possibly, spread the pandemic to his political opponent. Like, I mean, for real. Like, that's what's happening right now. And a doctor's writing this note, which is complete and utter bullshit. We're getting notes left and right that misspell all this stuff. The reason we're having these arguments is because these people have created this alternate reality, and it's the only thing that makes sure that they could ever win another election possible. The Republican Party needs to go away, go the way of the Federalist, of the Whigs. It needs to go away. We can have a conservative party, a Republican Party. And by the way, I'm gonna, I want to go on the record about this. I've been thinking about this all day. I don't know if you saw this. 
there was a there was a moment today. Pete Buttigieg went on Fox News. He's been going on Fox News a lot lately, and he goes on there and hands them their asses. Yeah. And what Pete Buttigieg does <laughs> is he goes on Fox News and he says, "You know, you guys are supposedly conservatives. You're supposedly religious. Here's how you're hypocrites. You're doing this wrong. You're doing this wrong." In a sane United States of America, Pete Buttigieg would be the leader of the Republican Party. That's why he can go on Fox News and kick their ass. Is because in a sane America, the young Pete Buttigieg, who is uh, openly gay, would be probably the leader of the new uh, uh, Republican Party. Because right now we're in a situation where that group is so far out that everybody else is clustered together and they're like, I think we have an objective reality. I think we do. And they're over there in this fascistic world. That's why we're facing this problem. That's why we're in the middle of this crisis. They are not a legitimate political party. And by the way, I'm really grateful Mike Lee said that. And I'm really grateful that Donald Trump has obviously just, he's just a total incompetent fraud. And he lies about everything you can see through. I'm I'm very grateful to them for that. Right. Well, let's not forget, we've never gotten a truthful uh, statement from any of these doctors before. No. So there, there isn't a, a lot of reason to really believe that, that they wrote this memo and that it wasn't him telling them what to write. Because, again, we've talked about this before. He is uh, a part of the Navy. Well, Trump is the commander-in-chief. If commander-in-chief uh, you know, commands you to do something, you have to do it. So it's, you know, I, I worry for his career because if this backfires on him, then he you know, could lose his license. I mean, it could be a bad thing for him as a doctor when we find out that this, none of this stuff is really true. But he's also just way a- ahead of his skis here trying to already sort of prog- prognosticate that after Saturday, uh, you know, this, this trajectory that they're, they're trying to, you know, to predict off of this advanced therapeutic whatever, uh, you know, can somehow predict for sure that he could appear like that. And, you know, and why, I think you know what it is. There's also no notion of like, why, why screw around with this at all? Like, okay, you know, we have the, the, uh, the environment, right? And we have emissions we want to try and limit. Well, why would we want to? Why would we err on the side of caution and really just go a little overboard just to make sure we're a little bit more safe than what maybe what the standards would be? You know, why wouldn't they just say, well, you know what, we're going to give them an extra week just to really make sure? Like that's the same mindset we exist in here, uh, where everything has to be like right away, right now, and they're forcing us, especially with the the uh, this. Uh, uh, the vaccine that they're, they're clearly rushing and pressuring. Like, what kind of a society do we live in where the president is allowed to pressure, and he's acknowledged, he's admitted it, that he's pressured these companies to come up with some sort of vaccine before November 3rd? This is insane. This is not science. This is like, this is a banana republic. Uh, I don't know. That, that, there's my rant. I think, I think, I think that's... Um that's a perfect encapsulation of it is we're not living in a country that has any relationship to reality. I mean, the basketball days have been exhausting. You know, they really, really have. By the way, we haven't even talked about the fact that, that Stephen Miller has coronavirus at this point and that nobody knows where yeah. Chris Christie is Could- or if he's okay. No one's Barr. seen Donald Trump outside of the – or B- Bill Barr. No one has any idea what's going on with Bill Barr. None. I, I have a constant um, refresh with Bill Barr up there and nothing comes up. And, and I mean – and, and you know, the, the thing about it and, – and we should end on this. The, the VP debate last night I thought was putrid in so many different ways. But the worst part about it was watching Mike Pence come out and not even just lie. But just lie as proudly and shamelessly as only uh, as only Mike Pence can. At, at least when Trump peddles this bullshit, like there's that kind of, you know, he enjoys it. You know what I mean? Like he, he enjoys the lie. Mike Pence is just a creature of a different species, man. And, and that, that's the problem is it's not just Trumpism. It's also the Republican Party. It's also the right wing. Their fellow travelers in that, they all work together in that ecosystem, in that malleable, alternate, subjective reality. And that the place where they reside is completely dangerous to shared society. They, they don't work together. They, they just don't. So I, I hope, I listen, I hope like hell we don't have to do an emergency podcast this weekend. That would be wonderful. Knock on wood. I would love a weekend off where we don't have to get on here and lament society crumbling into the abyss. That would be wonderful. But the good news is that we are building a wonderful community 
around the Muckrake Podcast. We are so thankful for you for listening. If you haven't already, go over to patreon.com slash muckrakepodcast. Uh, becoming a patron not only gets you uh, free content, we're getting ready to open a uh, Discord chat channel, which means you'll be able to talk with us, you'll be able to talk with everyone else, you'll be able to lament this stuff, share information. Uh, it's, it's going to be awesome. On top of that, I real fast, I don't think there's going to be another debate. Do you think there's going to be a debate? I mean, it would have to be virtual, but they don't want to agree to that, but, you know, so, so I guess not. Oh I mean, unless God. they want to throw one Ooh. in, like, you know, maybe Biden would be willing to do it if he tests, you know, negative, you know, in a couple of weeks or something. But again, we got to, how do you prove that it's his test that he proven? I mean, I guess the proof is that he's alive. <laughs> That's his negative I mean, test. I guess they, I guess they could bring him out in like uh, sensory deprivation tanks right. or something along those lines. But, but like, we, it's pretty clear that he had it at the debate. Oh yeah, for sure. For sure. You know? Yeah. That's frightening. I, mean, I, I, I it, it, it really, really is. So the question is whether or not there's going to be another debate. If there are more debates, uh, we have uh, exclusive coverage, analysis, and response. Last night we hung out with uh, a couple hundred of our, our, of our faithful listeners. Uh, it was a, I don't know if good time is the right word. These things are rough and they, they test you, but it's good to be with other people. Uh, you should join us uh, for that, for election nights, for exclusive content, patreon.com slash muckrakepodcast. Uh, if you need us until then, uh, you can find Nick over at Can You Hear Me SMH. You can find me at JY Sexton. Um, Listen, everyone, stay safe.